Hex. And a very warm, special welcome to this special Good Game. It's our 10th birthday and we are here to celebrate. Yes, and welcome to our audience who have travelled from across the country to join us here in studio. You guys look amazing. Yeah, nice one. <laughs> And let's hear it for our fantastic house band, Tripod. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nice to see you guys. Hey, Ben. I'm feeling pretty good considering you called us a band. <laughs> I, I love that. I think that's the first time. It's <laughs> <laughs> the first for everything. You guys look slick, by the way. Oh, thank Thanks. you. Yeah, very cool. Well, we have a packed show ahead along with some special guests. We're going to celebrate not just the last 10 years of good game, but the last decade of gaming. Because so much has changed, really, since 2006, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. 10 years is a really long time in video game land. And, you know, when the show started, EverQuest servers were still running. That's what? how ancient it was back then. <laughs> <laughs> well, to help us get a bit nostalgic, we put together something a little special to take us through just what's happened over the last decade. You seem to be making yourself quite comfortable here, my boy. As Nintendo's latest console goes on sale just after midnight. We would like to play. Known as the Ring of Death, they indicate a fatal problem. Several hours before the new Sony PlayStation 3 comes out, but hundreds of people are already in line waiting outside for it. I need no protection. War never changes. This is the phone that has changed phones forever. When doing a game, it's more about uh, what to expect from a game. Ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles! Mr. Marston. John Marston. Jason! He gets up, sets off for the bastion. Pretty good idea of why Sheldon's dead. It's 3D gaming to the masses without the glasses. I know I need to be tough. I'm just sad. We were asking for this much to make the game and this much to film it. Oh, because you're a dead man? We gotta get you out of here. Finish him. Well, now it's a party. Music? Hmm. Something classical. Pull up a chair by the heart. Hashtag Gamergate is a thin veil. Masking misogynist tendencies leading to threats and harassment of female gamers. Heard you wondering about my swords. I'm a witcher. Whirlwind of gaming memories, Hex. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to think about, which is why we have assembled the entire Good Game team. Everyone, please welcome Goose. <laughs> and next to him we have Rad. <laughs> Nick Boy. <laughs> and still part of the family is Hingers. <laughs> This is like the Good Game Justice League uh, or something. Obviously, I'm Batman. How, how is everyone? <laughs> how are you, Goose? I'm well. I'm well. This is delightful, isn't it? I yeah. feel very schmick. Yeah. But uh, that was a pretty interesting 10 years. It's been a long 10 years. It's been a very it's long 10 a, years. It's been, it's been about years. as long as every other 10 years. Yeah, Fair enough. Do you want to be technical it feels about it? Like one of those 
those late night talk shows and it I feel like people need amusing anecdotes of their time on One stage. of us must cry by the end of it, I think. <laughs> yeah. How about emotional? Are you offering? Sure, why not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some dose tears later we can look forward to. How are you, Rad? Now, you, you're, um, good. You, you host Well Played now yep. and uh, you've also popped up in a uh, regular Good Game show. How's, how's the transition? Um, it's been great. It's been really exciting. Just happy to be here. Yeah. Just happy to be oh, here, mate. Good. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Hingers, yes. tell us what you've been up to because you've been doing some really cool stuff in esports. Yeah, I've been in Brazil for the past month and I'm really jet lagged and I just flew in this morning <laughs> and I... Um, you look I, great though. Yeah, you yeah. look amazing. Yeah, nice. yeah, I don't know what's going on and I feel <laughs> real scared, but thank you for having me. Classic Hingers. <laughs> Nick? I'm just here to make Goose cry. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> Now, there were a lot of great games in that montage that we just watched, but for me, the big standout was definitely the Wii. You know, when the Wii was released in 2006, uh, it was... It was just on the was video. Just on the <laughs> but, like, literally, like, here came this console, you know, a little bit underpowered, it wasn't even HD, but it had this Wii mode, and suddenly anyone who wasn't a gamer before mm. could pick it up and go, oh, yeah, I get it, whereas controllers and interfaces have always been a big barrier for a lot of gamers. Yeah, I mean, we, we rag on the Wii a lot, but yeah. I think it was really really revolutionary at the time, just that first time, you know, you were being able to, you know, play archery digitally in a game, yeah. Like, yeah. virtually, it was, it was weird. And when was the last time you used a console as a doorstop? <laughs> so, <laughs> just all kinds of things. No, look, look, it does, as Hex said, it gets a lot of, you know, a bit of hate now, but we forget what it felt like when that console came out, because it was so long ago. It was kind of like, I remember having this real sense of wonder, because it felt like a toy again. It felt like mm. something that I hadn't seen before, and I had a heap of love for it. It really just stood out uh, next to these other gaming things. Although I did notice in the video there, the, uh, the Wii Balance Board. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what kind of memory. That, a show of hands, who actually has or bought a Wii Balance Board? Oh, yeah. no. Wait, wait. Keep them, ah, ah, ah. Keep them Marketing if works. you actually used it. Yeah, did you use the Wii Balance Board? Everyone used oh, it when they were like, yeah, I'm going to get heaps Wii Fit. It's like, <laughs> never going to happen. Under the bed. <laughs> I mean, that was the problem with the Wii, right? That it had more peripherals than it did have good games. Yeah. That it just yeah. ended up being this shovel where, like, there was no... It didn't capitalise on the thing that made it really special. That the, It just became waggle as a way to play if you wanted, but it was way better using yeah, a controller. Yeah, but I think it's because they realised that that's what made it accessible to all ages. It was known mm. as the family console. I mean, it sold mm. over 100 million units. So they were doing something right. They realised that they were they were onto a good thing with it. It's just I think that because they alienated themselves from the hardcore market yeah. by yeah. having it in standard def and and keeping it so family, they kind of shot themselves in the foot a bit. That made it hard for third party developers as well to make games for the Wii because they make them for the other consoles, but they're making a Wii version. It was like, oh no, the Wii version, you know? <laughs> oh no, and it's Do we a, have it was to use such the a Wii real shame. In it? Yeah. Yeah. Right, we're back on the hate train. <laughs> 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 it's all your like, strong stuff for the day. <laughs> Wii man? I, I love the Wii because like when you buy a Nintendo console you only want to play those three games like you want to play Smash you want to play Mario Kart and if you have friends you want to play Mario Party but I didn't want to play Mario Party for obvious reasons <laughs> <laughs> you know but like that's enough for me like, like you, you know and you get enough hours out of just learning Smash really yeah well, I think the other game that really shaped the generation was Minecraft. Mm. We didn't really know what that was when it came out. It was it launched as this very kind of indie, obscure, open world, blocky looking thing, and we didn't really yeah. understand it. I punched and a then... sheep. Seven out of ten. What is this <laughs> game? <laughs> but then it literally took over the world, mm. didn't it? It was incredible. Yeah, it became more than just a game. It, it spawned a genre, and it, it was like you know, if I could go back and tell my ten year old self, hey, you know this Lego you're playing every day that the cat uses as a kitty little thing? It makes it all a little bit gross. Um, so for another very specific. <laughs> memory, sorry. But you know, if I could tell my 10-year-old self, you'll be able to do this in the future in a video game and build whatever you want. Pfft. See, I think Minecraft is amazing because it did the thing that the Wii could have done, which is it introduced gaming to people in a way that they hadn't done before, and it, it transcended gaming. Like, people are using that in schools to teach kids with autism. It's a way of learning physics. It's like, it's using parts of your brain that games often don't use. I think it had so much more scope beyond just... People that build computers in Minecraft blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I still it's don't know how that works. And we're forgetting the biggest thing Minecraft changed. It turned Notch into an asshole. Oh. So there was that as well. <laughs> I like that Vajra would go back in time and tell himself to play Minecraft. I'd go back and invest in Mojang. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Microsoft paid $2.5 billion for Mojang in 2014. Red, wow. good move. I think so. <laughs> it's just getting bigger and bigger. HoloLens is going to be coming out. That's going to change the landscape of Minecraft again. Mm -hmm. Really excited for that. And I think it's just so fantastic that, yeah, it's being used in schools, it's being used in ways that we don't traditionally think of gaming, and it's altering how people 
you know, react to gaming as well. It needed that big company now to take it. Yeah. It got yeah. to, it's graduated to that to stage the next now. Level. But also, like, <laughs> two and a half right. billion dollars is like chump change to Microsoft. They don't, they don't even miss that money, you know? It's like, <laughs> yeah, we'll do it, whatever, we'll do it Minecraft, I don't care. What <laughs> do we buy, Minecraft? And, sure. And it, it, was, was actually... it was two and a half billion. <laughs> That's what I mean, it's nothing to them. Yeah. Bill, Bill Gates has like 40 billion dollars. Two and a half is not. That's like me having like eight dollars, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Bucks, if I don't you care. only have forty dollars in your bank account and you lose two fifty, whatever. That I, don't care. That I lose two fifty well, every day. I don't care. You get a new gig and you come back a changed man. Yeah, I don't need to brag, guys, but I can afford to lose two dollars fifty. <laughs> Oh, you've changed. I really can't. Oh, you, guys, I you know what I like most about Minecraft is it teaches kids to troll at a young age, and that's important in the gaming landscape, yeah. I think. Important skill. Uh, another big thing of the last 10 years was the App Store, which was something that maybe, maybe don't think about very much, but suddenly in 2008, you were able to pull out your phone, click a few buttons, put it back in, and a game would download to your pants from space, <laughs> and then you could play it in a few minutes. Like, that is phenomenal. Mm. It's huge. Yeah, it definitely um, sort of put the brakes on a lot of handheld consoles as well, because people didn't really see the point of carrying an extra, you know, portable console around if they could just play games on their phone. Pocket real estate is important, you know. Yeah, it yeah. pretty much killed the Vita. Yeah. Like, I mean, the Vita is the best piece of hardware out there and it just got annihilated by mobile gaming. But mobile gaming is responsible for all those news broadcasts where it's like, you know, there's half a billion gamers in the world. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that turned everyone into a gamer is that and Facebook games. To be fair, those news readers all do say it sarcastically when they read it out and they say, I guess we're all a gamer now. Yeah. <laughs> Up, I saw you on the bus playing Bejeweled. Yeah. <laughs> the subtext is there's half a billion nerds out there is what yeah. I should say. Yeah. What I like about um, portable gaming in particular of this App Store revolution was that the hardware it came on was touchscreen based, right? And there's something really tactile about... I don't think we're quite there yet with, with the best games we can do for touchscreens, but like, playing Hearthstone on a touchscreen, mm. like, you know, dishing out the cards, it just, mm. it's, it's something really wonderful about that that is so much better than playing it on, with a mouse and keyboard. And it is accessible in the way that everyone can pick it up and everyone knows how to sort of just make gesture controls versus yeah. that is a big thing that turns people off. They see buttons, joysticks, they say, I can't get a handle on that, yeah. so... Yeah. But we still get upset when they cost more than two dollars. Yeah. Don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Three dollars, come on. Well, I think the um, the other major advancement and, and probably one of the biggest things that's affected gaming for all of us is live streaming, Twitch, Let's Plays, that kind of thing. Um, what is the appeal in watching other people play games? Nick? This is pretty much all of your job. <laughs> you're, asking, you're asking me to justify my own existence. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you do it? You because do? all you idiots watch it! <laughs> The, the appeal is, that there's two, the, I think there's two big appeals. Number one is it's really appealing watching someone who is excellent at something play that thing, and that is not me. Uh, so you're watching a professional do something, it's like sports. But the other thing is I think that there's so many games now. There's so many, uh, there's so many things calling for our attention and lots of people are time poor. And so you actually go, oh, you can watch someone else play this game, I don't need to buy it, I don't need to commit to playing the whole thing, but I get like, Honestly, 70% of the enjoyment out of playing it myself. And I think that that's a huge reason why people watch. Yeah, it's a social I, aspect as well. It's like hanging out with the, mm. with the streamer or even if you watch a Let's Play on a VOD. It's like, yeah. you're hanging out. There's, there's a whole group of people here, and I'm kind of pointing because I've seen them all around, who have become friends solely because they've watched me play video games. Yeah. Yeah. You're all my children. I love them. Oh, and, so when I, and when I get fired, you have to take me into your house. <laughs> Because for me, playing video games, I'm already living, you know, a certain life vicariously like through my character. Doctor. Yeah. So to live vicariously through someone else who's living vicariously through their character is just like another step removed from that. It seems so odd. But you are doing live streaming. Like, your job is basically that, just with none of the boring stuff. I take um, care of the boring stuff and you do the... pretty in-depth critique, I would oh, say. Oh, please, please. <laughs> Whenever I stream, which is pretty rare, but whenever I do it, I love the feedback, you know? Like, there's something really addictive and, and enjoyable about seeing people yeah, like, that's, performing for that's them in a you, way. you like a narcissist, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, there's also huge applications to um, st streaming for esports and in terms of learning strategies and things like that yeah, as well. Yeah, I mean, predominantly you look at surveys and people are watching streams and live streams to learn and get better at the games. I mean, uh, particularly in esports, that's the reason most people watch these things. It's not because they are even that impressed with the people who are playing. They just want to get better so they can beat their friends. It's an entirely selfish motivation. <laughs> All right, well, thanks so much, everyone. Um, as usual, fee feel free to weigh in with your thoughts online. Yes, and now a word from someone special. Hi, it's uh, Michel Ancel, and I just wanted to wish our friends at Good Game a happy birthday. <laughs> oh, 
Now, Joe, we're often asked how a show like Good Game, a show about the often misunderstood medium that is video games, got off the ground here at the National Broadcaster. Yes, well, they basically gave us a cupboard and said, you're weird, geeky, nerdy, and we don't speak your language. Go for it! <laughs> so let's now take a look back at where Good Game began and how we got where we are today. Cast your minds all the way back to 2006. It was a simpler time. Social media was just one website for your space, and mobile phones were clever, but they weren't yet smart. And the idea of an Australian-made television show dedicated solely to video games was practically unheard of. Fortunately, things were about to change. The Australian Broadcasting Corporation had launched a new digital channel, ABC2, and was looking for exciting and original shows. So, long-time ABC producer and gaming tragic Janet Carr proposed the out-there idea for Good Game, a show for gamers by gamers. Calling on her gaming buddy Junglist, they planned a pilot episode. They reeled in their friend Kapowski to help present and took a daring leap into the unexplored territory of video game TV. Oh There's a noob in trouble! The pilot did its job. The show was greenlit for its first full season and Good Game was born. The team, which at the time consisted of only a handful of gamers slash TV folk, quickly laid claim to what practically amounted to a glorified broom closet. But with a dash of ingenuity, they lined the walls with gaming memorabilia whisked away from their shelves at home, creating a familiar, cosy space. The very first den of gaming. After a lot of blood, sweat and tears, well, mainly just sweat, the first official episode of Good Game was beamed out to audiences in September 2006. Hello and welcome to the very first Good Game. Hosts Junglist and Kapowski quickly earned a loyal following with their playful banter and love of games. Dr. Daniil covered the ins and outs of building a beastie gaming PC and Peanuts the monkey, well, he divided the audience and continues to haunt the office to this very day. At that very same time, an even more dramatic change was on the way. Kapowski left the show in search of a real job, so the hunt for a new presenter began. And after sorting through numerous submissions, there was only one clear standout. We of course know him now as TV's Barjo, but back then he was an innocent, mild-mannered, quiet, laughing gamer working on one of those dreadful up-late game shows. But it's clear now he was destined for greater things. Welcome to Good Game, the show for gamers by gamers. Also joining the host that year was Aya, the show's tips and tricks expert, and Lux, the show's first field reporter. Video games in particular offers all of these things while still in the comfort and safety of our own home. Now established with a full cast and crew, Good Game had evolved from a half-hour hobbyist chat into a bona fide TV program. And in 2008, the industry recognised that at the IT Journalism Awards, known as the Lizzies. Good Game scooped the award for best multimedia coverage and the big award of the night, the Gold Lizzie for technology title for the year. In early 2009, the GG family grew again when acclaimed journalist Tracy Ray Lien joined the team as field reporter, producing a range of broader reach stories about gaming culture. After moving overseas to study, she was followed by Ajax, fitting neatly into the now well-established role. The show was going from strength to strength, but the final weeks of 2009 would prove to be the most tumultuous period in the show's history. Whilst presenter changes are not uncommon in the TV industry, the sudden removal of founding presenter Junglist upset a number of fans and led to a public outcry. And while there are numerous accounts of that time online, it goes without saying that it was an extremely painful time for everyone involved. But such an unfortunate time never managed to overshadow the arrival of Hex. Whoa. Devoted fan of RPGs, MUDs and kick-ass 90s hacker movies, now joining Barjo for not only one, but two shows. Inspiration struck again with the launch of ABC3. The network was looking for children's programs and Janet had the perfect pitch, Spawn Point. Hello and welcome to Good Game Spawn Point, the show for younger gamers by gamers. Okay. Charging my laser. Also, Hex wasn't the only new face on the box. Darren the Robot, 
his icy robotic demeanor, eventually melting away to reveal a kind-hearted and lovable co-host with just the occasional bout of lasering. 2011 saw another change as field reporter Ajax bid farewell, and a charming young Melbourneite made his way to old Sydney town for his shot at fame. And as the show's longest running field reporter, it's clear he made quite an impression. <laughs> Talking about me. Looking back a full 10 years since its humble inception, Good Game has undergone numerous evolutions. We've upgraded studios, changed presenters, swapped reporters, launched new shows to meet the changing media landscape. As the ABC looked for traction online with services like iView, Good Game jumped into daily content with Pocket, hosted by Nick Boy, and dedicated esports show Well Played, originally hosted by Hingers and now Rad. We've even set foot outside the studio, IRL, to present Good Game Live at conventions and festivals around the country. Yes! <laughs> but even after all those changes, one core thing remains constant. If the ABC makes a channel, we'll put a show on it. And of course, our love for video games and passion for the people, the industry and the culture that surrounds them. No one knows what the future will hold. But with a brilliant audience, that's you guys, and an ever-expanding world of games and developers, it feels like there's never been a better time to say, good game. said that Good Game is really is a TV show without a screen between us and the audience. We're just that bit of a community that makes a TV show about our passion, which is video games. And without you, it would all be for nothing. So when we started to put together this birthday show, we asked you for your picks of Good Game's top moments. And you chose very well. Many of your suggestions were for our online shenanigans. We have such fun playing games together, don't we, Bajo? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I can't believe if we get paid to do it. And the one that got mentioned the most was the zombie survival game Days where the real monsters are the other players. Yes. Now, Daisy is an open world game where it was difficult to stay alive long enough to, to even find each other. There were zombies everywhere, so in order to get to you, I crawled on my stomach in the long grass for hours and I thought I would never find you. I yeah, I see you! I see you, Seth! Except the guy we Oh my god! Yes. Oh my god! This is the most exciting yes. moment for me. <laughs> I've been so alone for so long. <laughs> I just don't want to be alone anymore. Come to us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I'm not sure I've ever been so happy to see you as I was in that moment. Only to die moments later. Except I think... Oh! Who's that? Who's that? That's not one of us. Okay. Kill him. Oh god! No! <clears throat> what happened? Oh no. Oh. Oh. Hex, I was first to take all your gear. <laughs> <laughs> Another popular quest, Bajo. Uh, you've created some rather memorable characters using in game character creation tools. So, um, you know, I like to make characters that are hotter versions of myself, really, mm. but you like to take a more creative approach. Mm. Flattering me. I'm not. Humanity has questions. Are you human? Human as the day I was born. Despite all this, it's good seeing you again. I think we've done a great job, honey man. Hideous. I'm surprised you didn't break the game with those monstrosities. Well, the tricky thing is every new game is a new challenge and I have to try and top it, so mm. it's quite challenging. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I think they're beautiful, Hex, and the viewers clearly agreed. <laughs> now, we've both been to E3 a few times, uh, but we've only been overseas together once, and that was to Japan. <laughs> okay, Just okay, think, think unsexy thoughts. Okay. Oh, 15 seconds. Oh, okay. Trees, I have no idea what's happening. 
Let's go this case. <laughs> I don't think either of us have ever been more confused and entertained in our lives, Bajo. But what a fantastic trip that was. Um, now, younger gamers would also know that we make a show for ABC Me called Good Game Spawn Point. And some highlights from that show were also nominated. Yes, and of course, they all feature our Spawn Point co-host, Darren the Robot, who loves to sing. In fact, he once managed to upset the superstars of the ABC with his never-ending rendition of the Nyan Cat song. <laughs> Here we are, Brian. So I respawned, but in the same spot. Oh, it was no. so annoying. <gasps> the shower phone! Oh, I wonder who it is. <laughs> Hello, giggling hoot. Is he gone? Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, Darren, what an annoying robot, but I do love him. Mm. He does have a habit of getting motion sick, though. I'd take his singing over his robo-spew any day. Who's going to clean up all this robo-spew? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's all been taken care of. Uh, Goose! No. Oh, hi, Goose. Hi, Goose. hi guys. <laughs> oh, thanks for doing this. I hope you weren't busy. Well, I had games to play, guys. Oh, it's oh, everywhere. We can totally help you, but we're just so tired from all the games I know, it's just... Playing. It's... it's... Oh, 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 no! That was real acid, too. Hex, we're quite partial to the orbit of dressing up as well, aren't we? Oh, most definitely. Mm. Oh! Uh? No. No! Anything but this! Hex, turn the trash compactors back on, please! Anything but this, no! Oh. Must have been a boring conversation anyway. Hello, everyone! Welcome to the game Swan Point and Solo. this week, can you? Was that meant to be Yoda? Shut up. It was like an old woman. Can you flatten the whole bunny pitting zoo? Those bunnies had it coming. <laughs> Who are you? I am the games master. No, 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 just, just stay here. There's not enough X-Wings anyway, so I think we'll be fine. <laughs> I've never actually flown a mission in my life. <laughs> More monk, less hitman. Exactly. What is this about? Imagine fashion designer 3D. Mr. Goose. Rick O'Shea. Oh. Terribly sorry about the mess, man. And I absolutely I loved it. Should. At least he won't be alone. You are right about that. If you look for perfection... You'll never be content. Are you my contact, mister? The name's Goose. Just Goose. Speaking of which... Did you name the game for this? <laughs> now, we also saw the dawn of more artistic experiences in games, lots of slow walking and poetry, such as in games like Dear Esther. But you weren't such a fan of that one, were you, Bajo? No, no, what a stupid game. <laughs> you just walk and there's a poem, a voiceover, that's it. I found it so tedious and pretentious, even though I'm in the minority on that one. I thought I could do better, so I made my own version in Battlefield. The parallel vapours of my twin nostril explosion hit the paper and we melded into a single being, joined by more than mucus and parchment, but rather the untold fortunes of a world crying out for the answers to a riddle that no one dared ask. The utterance of the tale was telling of a twist in fate and a fold in my leg pants that I thought I'd ironed out weeks prior. My mind is an intersection of a bypass of twisting, folding, oxygen! But the moment that was nominated the most times by our viewers was actually for an entire episode. And I think it's also the show that I'm most proud of, Bajo. Yeah, me too, Hex. It was the special we produced for the ABC's Mental Health Week. David, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. What's the most stressful thing about your job? Ah, uh, um, commenters a lot, actually. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever heard the phrase, never read the comments, but that's really, really true when you write online, especially in gaming. 
Tell us your story, how you discovered that you had a mental health issue and how you dealt with it. You've been in some like lands and stuff like that? Yeah, they're, they're quite fun. I wish I could do this more often. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. It's just cool, I guess, to be around other people who enjoy the same stuff as yeah. you. And you can watch that entire episode online. Well, that's just a few of the hundreds of moments that you nominated as your favourite, so thank you so much to everyone who took the time to write them. Hey, good game. Congratulations for making it a decade. And here's to another ten more. Happy birthday, good game! Oh, what lovely birthday messages we've been getting. And we got some amazing birthday cards from everyone here in the audience too. Thank you so much for those amazing creations. Who sends birthday cards without a present? At least slip 50 bucks in there or something. I mean, come on. <laughs> Are you expecting cake? You just want cake. I want cake for 50 bucks. <laughs> we, 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 we've got something for you. Is it cake? No, and it's, it's not 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a piece of love, though. Yeah. Oh, it's is, an experience. Is it a musical gift? Uh-huh. Mm. <laughs> All right, well, take it away, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, tripod. Well played, good game, well played. Well played, good game, well played. Well played, good game, well played. Well played, good game. Open your menu and saw what you had on hand It wasn't very much Some rags and a beaker stand But you put the right points Into the right perks You didn't quit out You didn't let it go Crafted a kick-ass TV show You took a squad of noobs Into a combat zone into the fog of war, hoping they could hold their own. With each new mission, you got some XP. You leveled up, you learned a new power. Crafted a kick-ass magazine-style half hour. Well played, good game, well played. Well played, good game, well played. Well played, good game, well played. Well played, good game. I was overrun by ah, zombie hordes. Ah, Out of them I all by ah, myself. Ah, you put a beacon on. Much tripod, that was amazing. What an honor to be immortalized in song, Hex. Yeah, I just I think I have something in my eye, so uh, sorry about that. Sometimes I spit when I sing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. That was awesome. 
Uh, now it's time to welcome a few more friendly faces to the show. And standing in the middle, please welcome back Goose. Thank you, guys. Yes, I will be your MC in the middle for this portion of tonight's show, as we're going to test you guys in some gaming trivia in a round we're going to call Versus Mode. Versus Mode, Versus Mode, Versus Mode, Versus Mode. Now, if anyone's ever been to our Good Game Live stage show, you will have seen us battle it out before in some gaming trivia and challenges. So that's why we've split Bajo and Hex into two teams tonight. But of course, they're not alone. So would you please help me and welcome on Team Bajo from the Axis of Awesome, the very awesome Jordan Riscopoulos. <laughs> And making up the rest of Team Barjo tonight, it's the man, the beard, the magic, that is Dave <laughs> Cullen. <laughs> and of course, what would a Team Barjo be without a Team Hex? And joining Hex tonight, it's always good to have someone who has enthusiasm but not many answers to questions. So from the chaser, <laughs> it's Andrew Bindi Hansen. <laughs> and from Good Game Pocket, please welcome back my brother, Nick Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, my brother. We should clarify that. <laughs> or is he? We'll never know. All right, teams, welcome. Team Bajo, what are you going to bring to tonight's trivia and challenges? Mm, uh, a lot of unpreparedness. Good. Yeah, yeah. I just, think. just, just uh, a, a casual sense of aloof confidence. Mm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Good luck with that. Uh, and Hex, uh, how are you going to counter that? What are you guys going to bring tonight? Generally, just overconfidence. I think has worked well. <laughs> right. Well. Sure. Uh, we didn't win the last one, but I'm pretty sure we won most of these things, haven't we? Yeah, I think we yeah. probably have. All right, let's get into it, guys, with a test of some old-school gaming knowledge first up, with a round we like to call Retro Rally. Retro Rally. Thank you, Tripod. <laughs> Beautiful. The full version of that goes for 25 minutes, so I'm glad we're just <laughs> keeping them short. All right, teams, cast your minds back to the 80s and the 90s, a time when games came in big, beautiful boxes with eye-catching artwork, because we're going to appreciate some of that fine work right now. But, teams, we've obscured the first word from each title, so it's your job to guess what the full game name should be. All right, so we're going to take it in turns. First of all, let's start with Team Hex. Have a look on the screen there, and Team Hex, can you figure out what cat? What cat is the title of this game? Okay. Uh, this is awesome. Well, he's wearing a headband, so is it Sad Cat? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I mean, I'm getting some Michael Jackson vibes, man. You know, oh, up yeah. against the wall. Oh, you, yeah. you think like J Michael Jackson Cat is the game? <laughs> You're thinking Dead Cat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a video, it's a video game, come on. Come on! It's been like at least ten years, right? <laughs> He doesn't. He doesn't look dead. Or, or what was you? What were you saying? He looked sad. Look at the expression yeah. on his face. He's happy cat. He's got. What's happy that? In, what's in his left hand? Because he's got some cool, cool, cool. badass. I know he's, he's, bad. he's bad. He's bad. He's yeah. bad cat. I reckon he's a bad cat. In Michael Jackson. Hand, Michael Jackson. Bad cat. I'd All right, Team Hex. What bad are you thinking? We're going with bad, bad cat. cat. Is the correct answer? Oh, We're going Team Hex. He's bad. Bad cat indeed. All right, Team Bajo, think you can do better? Mm, maybe. Than well, getting no, it right? the, the, we could do the same. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, correct. Right. Cut right. better than correct. <laughs> it's correct or incorrect, isn't it? <laughs> oh. All right, have a look at the screen there and tell me what night. What wow. night? Is it bad night? He looks pretty yeah. badass. <laughs> <laughs> bike night? Oh, bike night? That does make sense because there is a bike there. Yeah. <laughs> There's also a sword. Sword night. Sword bike night. Sword bike night. <laughs> this has turned into a game of just scream what you see. <laughs> I'm going to need a final answer, guys. What do we think? Uh, uh, I, I, action night. He looks like he's about to get into a bunch of action. You're just yeah? giving them more choices action now. Night? Action night? No? I like bike night. Bike night it is. Bike night is not the correct answer. <laughs> hey, 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 guys, night. it is cycle night. So you were very, oh. very close. But bike really cycle? Close. On a technicality. Yeah. That's close enough. We should get half a point at least. Sure, half a point for Team Barb Yay! No questions at the question. No. Is that how this works? You just ask for points and you get them? Yeah, yeah. We should be deducted oh. half a point for interrupting you, Goose. 
is the reason. I will tell mum. Don't, do <laughs> Don't do that to your brother. Yeah. No, let's move on, guys. Because very annoying. No, we can't move on until they get zero. <laughs> it's really unfair. Like oh. the only reason they got half a point is because they said night, <laughs> and that was already on the box. <laughs> Well, maybe you can implore that tactic for your next choice. Uh, so, guys, can you tell me what of the fat man <laughs> is your box art here? Lips what of the fat like man? Terrible of the fat man. <laughs> is it <laughs> snot of the fat man? Mm. Oh, he is a bit snotty. What's, What's going on? He's coming out of his nose there. Is I, it sn I think I they're supposed they eyes. to be eyes, but I don't understand why there's eyes in his nose. <laughs> I think oh, logic has gone out the window if we're looking at this game already. It's I would like say Turkey something like, like, if I was being serious, I reckon it's like Knight of the Fat Man. I was going to say Knight. Because that sounds like yeah, a video yeah, game. Yeah. You get half a point no. if you say Knight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I think too. Do you I think Knight? Th yeah, I think Knight. Mm. Team Captain Hex, are you going to lock it in? Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, it is the incorrect answer. The answer is Tongue of the Fat Man. Oh. <laughs> a correct oh. game. I reckon we deserve three points for that, though. <laughs> Team Bajo, you've got one more retro cover to look at, and can you tell me what fighter? Uh, I know this because I played hundreds of hours of this. Really? <laughs> yeah. Is it Undy Fighter? It is not Undy Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is Pit Fighter. Is the correct answer Pit Fighter? Congratulations! <laughs> this, is, this is so fun. Because it had like the, the mo video capture kind of animation for the first time to see, you could see underpants and mocap for the first time. <laughs> well done, team Barjo. Okay, and well done, team. Some very good sleuthing there. Next up, we want to see how well you guys know your gaming music. Tripod, are you guys ready with your guitars? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right, well, we're going to play Take Cover. Take <laughs> Thank you, Tripod. <laughs> OK, Tripod are going to sing each team a musical clue that's going to be two games mashed into one. The tune is from one game, but the lyrics are describing an entirely different game. Teams, you need to identify both the games in this melodic Frankenstein. So let's start with Team Barjo. Are you guys ready for your clue? Mm, yeah. Excellent. Uh, Tripod, when you're ready, take it away. You spawn on your first day And need to collect some wood to craft Make yourself a table and your first two Should be a big axe <laughs> To get quicker at collecting wood Make a wood pickaxe to dig a tiny stairway in the ground to collect enough cobblestones for a furnace to fit in your mountainside home. After that, make a bed, go to sleep at sunset before the monsters all spawn outside. Thank you, Tripod. Beautiful stuff. All right, Team Barjo, that was your song. Can you tell me what was the theme and what were the lyrics describing? The song was from Portal? Correct, yeah, yeah. the song yeah. was Portal. The greatest video game song ever made. Beautiful song. Um, <laughs> it just was. It was yeah, I, it was I cried the first time I heard it. Yeah. Um, enough about me. The, the, the words, I heard the word craft and I knew what, <laughs> yeah. what the words were. Yeah, straight away. Yeah. yeah. Cooking mama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite cooking mama. It's uh, Minecraft. It is Minecraft. Well done, <laughs> Team Barjo. Two points. <laughs> All right, now Team Hex, it's your turn. So ears at the ready tripod, if you will. You ooh, ooh, died, you died, you ooh, 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 you died, you died, you died, you died, you ooh, 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 died. There we go, thank you, tripod. <laughs> What's a game you could possibly die in? Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh... Sorry, the music was from Tongue of the Fat Man. That's a theme. So, Dark Souls lyrics is yeah. correct. Um, the, the, the music, and look, it sounds a bit Leisure Suit Larry to, to, in my memory of, of Would, Leisure Suit Larry. I never played Leisure Suit Larry. Well, well, it, oh, really? Tell so, me about mm. Leisure Suit Larry. Well, I had to, I had to illicitly uh, get a copy when I was about 10. <laughs> you actually look like Leisure Suit Larry. But thank you. <laughs> Thank you, mate. My, my lifestyle is very similar too. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Andrew, I'm going to cut you off there and say I'm so glad I redact what I said earlier. Is the correct answer? Oh, yeah. 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 
done. Yeah. I was thinking well rock done. band Beatles because it sounded a little bit like when I'm 64. When I'm 64. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think that was the intention with, with Leisure Suit Larry. Was, you know, was a bit of, the, the theme was like that and then his, his life was kind of like the Beatles. Yeah. But obviously yeah. it pays off to be a pervert, so well done. <laughs> it does, it does, I can tell you. I'm experienced as a professional entertainer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, great stuff. And back to Team Bajo for another song. Tripod, when you're ready. Tripod. I'm so glad we hired musical professionals to play solos like <laughs> <laughs> That is what a lot of the characters in that game did was just frighten you with with tongues and eyes and all sorts of things because it was doom It was mm, doom. It was well doom. done Jordan. Mm. Uh, and but can you guys tell me what were the lyrics describing? Oh, Unlocking okay. recipes to seek approval from a dude uh, When the lyrics is it is it what you said before is it cooking mama? We got a feeling it might have come true after all <laughs> <laughs> You're just answering <laughs> answering questions sort of ten minutes before they are uh, actually being asked. That's Were you in right. the green room reading cards again? Uh, I'm not talking about that. Uh, it could be Barbie horse riding adventures. <laughs> what answer are we going to lock in? Uh, this, I guess we'll go with Cooking Mama. Yeah. Is yeah. the correct answer. Hey! Well done, Tim Bajo. <laughs> All right, and now it's time for the final clue. So, Team Hex, here we go. Three, four. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. Um, having played hours and hours and hours of that game, I would know that the music is from The Witcher 3. It is from The Witcher 3. Well In done, fact, yes. I would say it's Do it. Steel for Humans is the exact name of that song. And I'll just check my cards. Wow. Sure! Yeah, that's <laughs> <my> card. <laughs> Who else is steel for, really, anyway? <laughs> well, because it's steel for humans, silver for monsters. Because, you see, Geralt has two swords. <laughs> OK, OK, I think we're going to move on. Uh, can you guys recognise the lyrics and uh, the game they were describing in the lyrics? Mm. Palace well, lines, red uh, shells. Yeah, like, I, I, I thought the same thing, but I reckon Dave's been getting the right answers before, so I reckon it's that Barbie it's, game it's, he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Barbie horse yeah. It's a risky bet to make. Either that or Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. <laughs> it could only be... No, it's bloody Mario It Kart. is Mario Kart. Well done, Team Hex. <laughs> All right. Well, wonderful work, teams. And let's hear it again for Tripod, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. OK, teams, I think you're doing OK, but you're going to need all the creative power you can muster in our next round, which we call Pitch This. Now, we're all familiar with the crowdfunding that many developers try to employ these days to get their dream concepts made. Well, teams, tonight you're each going to pitch a fictional game to our audience. The twist being that I will actually assign you each a job title and a prop that you must then use to base your individual spiel around. And then, as a group, you're going to name it, you're going to tie it all together, and our audience will vote with applause for the game they would back. So, if we could please wheel out the treasure chest of crap ABC props. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As wheeled out by the crap ABC Mario Brothers. <laughs> Mario Brothers, give them a round of applause, guys. <laughs> the buffest Luigi I've ever seen. <laughs> All right. Now, guys, we've got a bunch of props here. What I'm going to do is just throw them out at random. So here we go. Uh, they're very weird, very strange. There you go, Hex. Have oh. one of those. Um, as we look in here, there we go. A little bit of sport, because as gamers, we need a bit of that. There you go, Dave. A um, couple more props. What have we got here? Barjo, a giant heavy rock. Ah! <laughs> 
These are your sporting skills, are they? <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Nick, there oh, you go. Uh, what else, what else, what else? A lot more. Uh, there we go. Andrew, that's Oh, you. thank you. And Jordan, for you, uh, there we are. Something small and ah! oh, There we go. All right. Oh, okay. Time really flies. It's really, okay. it's got, that's pointy. It is. And rusty. That's sure. just thrown tetanus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, but you're going to need some jobs as well. You're going to need official game maker jobs. So uh, I've got a couple of hats for you guys. We're first of all going to need some uh, designers. So if you want to pop these on, uh, there we go. So you guys look like hipster, hipster game designers. Pop those on. But of course, you will also need uh, a couple of artists. So uh, I there feel we like are. Parappa the rapper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And finally, we're going to need a bit of spin, a bit of uh, marketing, a bit of wank. So there we are, guys. If you want to pop those ones on, and that's for you, Nick. So these are your job titles, guys. So let's start with Team Barjo. If you guys want to hop up and tell us about your amazing game concept. Yeah. Well, um. Is there anything more simple than a rock? Uh, <laughs> uh, the first thing that comes to mind is um, when I was a kid and I liked a girl, I would throw rocks at them. Uh, okay. Not the best strategy. I don't recommend it. But it made me uh, want to want to design a game uh, that combines uh, Tinder and Pokemon Go. So <laughs> basically, it's an augmented reality game where you try and get dates by throwing rocks at the opposite or same sex, whatever works. Take it away. How will, the, how will this game look? Uh, yeah, no, we're, look, we're really, really excited with kind of... Uh, what we've got going on uh, with art. Um, we've actually got Dwayne Johnson, you know, The Rock, um, <laughs> involved in the project. It's just going to be a little, really like clockwork. You know, when you think rock, you think clock in socks with the fox on a box. A lot of Dr. Zeus stuff happening um, in this game. And, it's, and, and, and rock around the rock. Um, one, two, three, a rock, four, a rock. <laughs> rock. Um, but bring it to the masses. Dave, you've got some great things to talk about, yes. don't you? Yeah. Hello, I am David. I am a marketing guy slash Pokemon trainer. <laughs> <laughs> and this is actually the peripheral. Uh, peripheral <laughs> is a Latin word meaning thing you use for a week. And then <laughs> kick under the bed with the PlayStation Move and the Wii Fit balance board. So this is uh, a rock peripheral. So you basically use this uh, to throw at the people. Do we throwing a rock at girls? Uh, yeah, 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 whoever, whoever okay. you're interested in. Throw a rock at whoever you're interested in using this amazing new peripheral. Wow. Uh, and also, yeah. if you happen to drop the peripheral, we're making special shoes that crush your foot. <laughs> it's really good, because if, if you throw real rocks at people you're interested in, that's actually a crime. Mm. So yeah. it's good that you got the game. Yeah. 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 Sure. And, and, guys, does this game have a name? Rock uh. Band. <laughs> I think that one's taken. Oh, how about then Dwayne Johnson Band? Yeah. <laughs> Rock Band 2? Rock Band 2, sure, I'll take that. Well done, Team Bajo. <laughs> what an amazing concept you have there. All right, now, Team Hex, do you guys think you can do any better? Not really. Sure, all right, let's give it a whirl. <laughs> all right, so, uh, guys, jump up, and can you pitch your game idea to our audience, starting with you, lead designer Hex? Yes. Um... <laughs> Everything I always wanted. Mm, congratulations. <laughs> Maybe hold it the right way up if that's the case. <laughs> I'm not good with children. Uh, yes, OK, so uh, despite being such a central part of our human condition, I, d I don't understand why we don't see more games about the miracle of childbirth. <laughs> um, so I, I quit! <laughs> I propose uh, a birthing simulator oh, in which uh, you will experience the 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 full nine month pregnant pregnancy culminating in the glorious and gory birthing uh, experience. Um, it'll be coming at you in uh, in 4K, <laughs> high definition. Uh, more of which will be uh, expanded upon by my fantastic uh, art director. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Andrew, the art director of the birth uh, simulator experience. <laughs> uh, I, I think uh, the uh, you know the blood and gore is very important in the visual style <laughs> of this true. game, and uh, uh, of course, uh, lighting. Lighting effects very important. Once the player delves into the birth canal, it can be very dark inside there. Uh, so we, we want to get all, all the right textures and the moisture and the meconium needs to be crystal clear. Uh, of course, the, the crucial, the crucial art piece is of course the, the uh, placenta, uh, which is after all the final boss. <laughs> now. Uh, Are we going to sell this unmarketable piece of crap? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Uh, so, 
I hate gamers. Uh, and, and I understand you're all stupid and you're going to buy anything. So I've included a pre-order bonus. If you don't pre-order the game, I'm going to put snakes in your bed. <laughs> so, so, so that should help. Guys, does the game have a name? Oh. Any can, can I actually suggest something? Yes. Could we call it Caesarean or Delivery and just shorten that to COD? Because that... <laughs> But it is. All right. Well done, guys. Have a seat. <laughs> Very creative as well. All right, everyone. Uh, now it's actually time for the audience because you guys are going to be the ones with the ultimate power to make one of these games a reality. <laughs> so first of all, with a round of applause, was it Barjo's game Rock Band 2? <laughs> Can't believe we're using real game names. Or was it Team Hex's game COD? <laughs> Listen to their pitch? <laughs> well, I think we have a clear winner, guys. It is Team Hex, so a big round of applause for them. <laughs> okay, guys, we are nearing the end, and there's only one way to settle this gaming titan face off, and that's with a round of good old fashioned trivia. So let's play High Score Rumble. High Score Rumble, High Score Rumble, High Score Rumble, High Score or Rumble. <laughs> All right, now, Team Hex, you will go first to see how many general gaming knowledge questions you guys can answer in the time it takes Tripod to play the Tetris theme. So, are you guys ready? Sure. Excellent. Tripod, guitars at the ready, and take it away. Question number one. Master Chief's real name is... Halo. Incorrect. <laughs> que <laughs> question number two. It's GTA. John. Isn't it John? It's John. It is correct. Okay, yes, I'll give you that. Well done. Sorry. Question well, number two. Okay. GTA 5 is set in the fictional city of what? Oh, uh, Los Santos. Los Santos. Correct. Correct. Yes. I'll give you that. Number three. Pokemon Go's team are Mystic, Instinct and... V the... Valor. Valor, correct. Question number four. What is Mo Yang the Swedish word for? Um, Ooh. Oh, uh, Ooh. Ikea. Sure. <laughs> Incorrect. Question number five. Which game has the most enemy types? Doom or Super Mario World? Super Mario World. Correct! Number six, Just Dance is named after a song by which artist? Lady Gaga. Correct! Uh, in Uncharted 4, Nathan Drake's daughter's name is... Oh, it's a spoiler. That's a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan Drake has a daughter. Oh, <laughs> Moving on. Um, no, 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 that's Moving on. Number... Man, I'm only, I'm only up to the <laughs> Hang on, Tetris. There we go. Ah. Time's out, guys. Ah. Well done. We forgot to check these for spoilers. <laughs> All right, moving on. Well done, Team Hex. Now it's Team Barjo's turn. So, Tripod, could we please start once again the Tetris clock? Team Barjo, what game series features Drivatars? Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's the, the Forza series. It is the Forza series. Uh, what colour is Waluigi? He, yeah, Wait, he's white. Yellow. Wait, purple. <laughs> Her, his clothes purple. are purple. Sure. Uh, it is, it is purple. In Fallout 4, who keeps telling you a settlement needs your help? Oh, stupid hat man. Um, I'm going to need more than that. Oh, oh no, I can't Hang remember. On. What does the 64 refer to in Commodore 64? 64 units were sold. <laughs> Not doing well, Team Barjo. In Pokemon, what is Pikachu's ultimate form? Raichu. It is Raichu. Street Fighter's Blanca comes from which country? Brazil. Brazil is correct. Professor Layton is a professor of what? Solving uh, mysteries. Is a professor of puzzles? Incorrect. It's archaeology. At the what? start of the first injustice, who does Superman kill? Hang on. Hang Next on. Loser. Hang on, we've got one left. Injustice versus Superman kills... I believe the, the music has ended, Bajo. Credibility is oh, on the line. It was, it was the tongue of the fat man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was actually the Joker, guys. Oh, was the Joker. Was but well done to cat. Team Bajo anyway. Big round of applause for them. <laughs> and, of course, well done to both teams tonight for doing so very well. Give them a big round of applause, everyone. <laughs> All right, you've run the gauntlet of fairly ridiculous gaming challenges, and it's finally time to see which one of you lot reigns supreme. So, score check now. With a score of 9.5, Team Barjo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know which where the point five with came from. <laughs> bloody Knight's question. <laughs> which means with a score of 11, Team Hex is the winner! Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.
Todd Howard here from Bethesda. Want to wish a happy 10th anniversary to everybody, the whole staff at Good Game. Keep it up. We'll see you another time. Well, Bajo, time is up, I'm afraid. We have to bring this birthday show to a close. Yes, thank you again to everyone who joined the epic quest to travel to the studio to be a part of this celebration. We hope you feel rewarded. It's been utterly amazing having you here. Yeah, and to the hard-working crew at the ABC who helped us make not only this, but the other... I don't know, thousand or so shows we've made in our decade on air. We thank you also. Yes, and to all our special guests, Tripod, Bindi, Dave and Jordan and the rest of the Good Game family, thank you for coming along. Tonight, but Good Game will be back on your screens next Tuesday at the usual time of 8:30 p.m. on ABC2. So until then, may, may all, all your games, games be good, good ones. ones. Bajo out. Hex out. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well played.